Good morning. This is John from the Springs Mennonite Church. And I'm here today, near the end of the second week of Advent, to share another thought with you about Elizabeth. Now this week, the context for the for what I've shared has come from Luke chapter 1, verses 5 to 7. And I want to read those again today. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly order of Abijah. His wife was a descendant of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were getting on into years. Well, yesterday I shared about some of that, and, and, and how Zechariah couldn't talk as a sign of the power of God. And, and you know, it's hard for us to relate uh, in the same way that Elizabeth and Zechariah had to, because not being a, a, able to have a baby in today's world is not seen as something, uh, something you've done against God, but it very much was in their day. And so I want to share a passage here. Now that that, that situation has changed, Luke 1 to 24 and 25 says, And after those days, Elizabeth conceived, and for five months she remained in seclusion. She said, This is what the Lord has done for me when he looked favorably on me and took away the disgrace I have endured among my people. And then one more passage, Psalm 84, 11. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good thing does the Lord withhold from those who walk uprightly. The passage in Luke 24 and 25 here reflects how Elizabeth understood this pregnancy. She understood it as God removing the disgrace that she had experienced. Now, I'm thinking the other day, there was a, a thing on the news about a guy who had been convicted and spent many years in prison. And after he died, uh, they proved that he didn't do it. He was innocent of it. And I can't imagine being convicted of something I didn't do. And, spending many years incarcerated because of that. But here's Elizabeth who has spent many, many years barren and, and living the social consequences of that, which was disgrace. And knowing that people were thinking, well, she must have done something. This just doesn't happen unless she's offended God somehow. <clears throat> And then finally, all of that changes with this baby coming. And she doesn't gloat. You know, when, when we felt like we've been offended or we've been dishonored, and then that proves to be not the case, it's easy to gloat and say, well, I tried to tell you. It's easy to bring attention back to you and say, I have been offended. We have political characters in our in our country today who, who all they seem to want to do is talk about how how much of a victim they are. There are a lot of marriages where one partner talks about how much of a victim they are. And it's almost never true, at least not the way they describe it. But Elizabeth does not ever say, I've been a victim. She she gets pregnant, she understands it, and it says she secludes herself. Maybe she didn't want people telling her how wonderful she was when before she knew they had told her how terrible she was. We don't need people like that in our lives. But it says here, but she, she was so thankful because God had taken away her disgrace. The other passage I read from the Psalms says that God bestows favor, and there's no good thing he withholds from those who walk uprightly with him. You see, the key here is 
You have to walk uprightly with him. Now, if you've chosen to walk somewhere else, okay, that's your decision. You can make that decision. I, I personally think it's probably not a good one, but that's my opinion. Obviously, your opinion counts more than mine does. But for those who choose to walk up, walk uprightly, meaning to walk doing what God wants them to do, he will do good things in their lives. He will turn bad into good. He will heal when there seems to be no way. It doesn't matter whether it happens instantaneously or over a long time. The fact of the matter is, it will happen. And Advent is the story of the coming of the Son of God to change the world. Change my world, change your world. And let's face it, folks, the world we live in, well, it could use some changing. I was thinking the other day, what would it be like if there were no more wars? How much money could the world save on things to help people instead of blow them up? How much better off would we be if we had a world of people full of compassion and kindness instead of anger and envy and vengeance? God brings his son into the world during this time we call Christmas for the sole purpose of reconciling man to him. The question comes, are we doing our part to walk with God? And, and this is all fitting around a term called grace. Grace is the unmerited favor of God, meaning he did something that you didn't earn. He did something you don't deserve, but he did it anyway. And he did it because he loves us. And so I'd like you to think about your own life. Where have you seen grace at work in your life? Where have you been unmerited, given compassion, and you didn't deserve it? Well, if you'll think about those times, you'll start to understand why we should walk with God. Thanks so much for listening. I ask your blessings on me and the rest of us here at Springs as we try to share the good news during this time. If you have a concern or a prayer request, let us know, and we'll do whatever we can as fast as we can to help meet your need. So I'll be back tomorrow and finish up this week. And I hope you have a, a really blessed day.